Welcome back to the uh, lecture series, which is part of the electronic uh, course on ethnic studies. Uh, this is the second of two experimental electronic courses that have been conceptualized, commissioned and funded by the Faculty of Sociology and Anthropology at Tamasat University. And so this is going to be one in a series of lectures where we are going to be building on things that we've talked about in the recent past. And one of the comments made uh, um, in previous lectures was about the research methods that are appropriate, are most appropriate for studying um, ethnic issues, uh, for studying ethnicity. And one of the comments that I made was that a subject such as ethnicity and as an anthropologist, as a social scientist, I'm approaching I, my inclinations and my personal preferences and my research sites um, all lend itself towards an interdisciplinary approach. And we talked about, we, put, we talked about mixed methods approach um, in the other course on research methodology, but we also mentioned that, that there are certain research questions and the restraints, restraints on certain research sites require us to have an interdisciplinary approach uh, to our research. And so this, um, some of these uh, reflections on Siamese cosmopolitanism actually came out of my own fieldwork, which um, I've been doing since 2012. And I think I mentioned this in another course, in an introductory lecture, I've been doing a study of Sufi movements in Thailand, which um, has led me to do field work in Ayutthaya, in Bangkok, in Pangar Bay, in Songkla, and in Narati Wat. It's a multi-sided research uh, project. And I, um, we, we all know about Malinowski, and we all know the way in which his time, his extended time of field work happened all by accident. The way that he uh, went to uh, Papua New Guinea originally, having travelled through Australia in the classic kind of expedition style as it was popular at that time, late 19th century, early 20th century. And because of the First World War, he ended up by spending time, a lot of time, um, in the field. And he, as we know, he invented this uh, approach called participant observation. But all of this happened by accident. Uh, we often stumble um, into, um, into an interesting field of social inquiry, and we also sometimes stumble into using different methods. And I'm going to be talking a bit about, about, a bit about that later on. But um, I stumbled into the study of um, ethnicity in uh, the course of my work doing uh, field work uh, amongst these Sufi groups because for the first time in my professional career, I was doing research in, amongst Muslim communities that spoke Central Thai and Muslim communities that spoke Southern Thai and Muslim communities that spoke Malay. And so, um, because I started to uh, get to know um, different Muslim communities in different parts of the country, I began to be interested about what the historical record says about Muslim influences. And so, um, one, of the, one of the things that, um, and I like to use the, the idea of a disciplined interdisciplinary approach. There's a type of interdisciplinary uh, research which is undisciplined. In a sense, we cherry pick. It's like going into a garden and picking flowers or picking vegetables. We just see it there and we pick whatever we think we are after. Now that is an undisciplined approach. So a disciplined, a disciplinary approach 
means often that we collaborate with colleagues who, for example, are textual specialists, uh, people who are, are cartographers, uh, people who have got a lot of expertise in photo archives. So let me, let me tell you a few stories about how I stumbled into the study of ethnic diversity in, in, in Siam, specifically a UTR in Bangkok, as part of my research project into Sufism. And it's one of the first things that I did um, when I began to go from the field where I was collecting my own primary data into the library where I began to search for anything and everything written uh, by, by French or Muslim or Indonesian or Dutch or British traders and sailors and missionaries and mercenaries, I began to stumble across a range of old maps. Now, from now on, we're going to be just, you don't need to see me anymore. Uh, let's have a, we're going to be looking more at the maps, so we're going to go to full screen. And what I want to do is um, point out that some of, so I went to a UTR, started doing research in a UTR, I knew quite a bit about the history of a UTR at the time, but uh, the things that I read hadn't actually told me much about the presence and the size and the nature of the Muslim communities in the UTR that existed at the time. Now, uh, what I would, what I, you may not be able to see this well enough for you to, um, you may not be able to see this well enough, but if you were able to see this well enough uh, from your screen, uh, maybe you're just watching this on a mobile and that would be very difficult. There will, of course, be links to uh, this PowerPoint um, uh, are made available to you, but you'll see on the top right hand, or top left hand corner, which is in a large part of the western end of a UTR, you will see that the person who was drawing this particular map, this person included um, minarets. Uh, you will see on the left hand side on the northern end of the of the river, you will see, uh, that's the Jalpriya River, you will see that there is a minaret and there's one on the bottom left-hand corner of the same enlarged section. So it is interesting that a number of cartographers um, recorded the diversity that existed in Ayutthaya. So let's just remind ourselves about a UTR's history. So this map actually is, is part of an enormous map of the world produced uh, in the Middle Ages uh, by a, I think he was an Italian traveler. And it includes um, a, a picture of a UTR. You will see the enlarged section there. And what is interesting is that in a UTR, he, they depict ch Christian churches and Muslim mosques as, as well as Buddhist temples. And so a UTR was internationally recognized as a cosmopolitan port city. A cosmopolitan port city where there were people of many ethnic backgrounds, there were people of many religious backgrounds, and the largest religious minorities were Christians and Muslims, that there were many languages that existed at the time. There's a very interesting archive, a Dutch archive of the VOC, and it records, for example, the way that the kings of Ayutthaya, most notably King Narai, he wrote to the Dutch in Malay. His words were translated into Malay, and Malay scribes in the court in Siam communicated with Dutch traders, of which there were many, 
in Malay, not in Siamese, not in English, not in Dutch, but in Malay. And this is partly due to the importance of uh, Southeast Asia, present-day Indonesia and the Malay Peninsula in the trade there. But Ayutthaya was like many other port cities at the time, and I'm thinking of Guangzhou, I'm thinking of Macau, I'm thinking of Malacca, I'm thinking of Batavia, and in all of these places, in all of these places, trade happened in ports where diversity was seen to be part and parcel with prosperity and trade, and it would be actively, um, it would not be furthering your financial goals, your desire for prosperity, to impose a monolingual policy, and to not welcome strangers. Okay, so that's one map. Another map here, uh, that's the enlarged section, which uh, shows that in a bit more detail, but I'm sorry, it's a bit depixelated, won't be as clear as it could be. Here is another uh, diagram uh, written about a UTR, and again, I want you to, I want to point out that although most of the Christian churches and the mosques were outside the city, and they were on the, on the southern side, outside the moat, uh, there were some of the pictures from this period, and this is at the later end of the Ayutthaya period, clearly showed a range of um, architectural influences. And uh, with my specific interests in uh, Islam, my expertise in Islam, here is another uh, photo, another map. And you'll see on the right-hand side that there are, there are details about the various ethnic minorities that were given specific quarters. And right in the middle of the city there was known as Moor Street or Muslim Street. And so again, although Thailand today may be, people may assume that Thailand is an ethnically hom homogenous uh, nation state, this was uh, certainly not the case in the Ayutthaya period. Some more information about that. Um, there were, um, again, this is another map showing where other ethnic communities existed in Ayutthaya. Okay, so, so one of the ways, as, as a social scientist, and you, because you are enrolled in the Faculty of Sociology and Anthropology, you may have a bent towards sociology, you may have a, more of an interest specifically in anthropology, perhaps because you are more familiar with words and comfortable with words than with numbers. But regardless of whether we're sociologists or anthropologists, when we study a specific phenomenon that we encounter in the now, these phenomena, whatever they are, they didn't fall from the sky. They, they have a history. And these histories um, have got oral sources but more importantly, these histories have got uh, have been written down in the form of books, in the form of uh, sketches, um, a bit later on, archival photos, um, and a wonderful uh, source for those of us who are interested in understanding Thailand's religious, ethnic and linguistic diversity is the way in which many, uh, many temples have got murals that depict uh, daily life, and uh, there are a number of, of books um, mentioning Thai murals, and those references will uh, be in, in the comments section there, and they will be part of the um, course outline, suggested reading that uh, you will be given. What I want to point out here is in this mural, 
we, uh, we, there are depicted a number of different religious minorities, and some of them are Muslims, uh, clearly dressed in turbans, um, of a style which is more associated with Muslim uh, travellers, as well as some Chinese. Here are some others uh, you will see here, um, a mixture of Chinese and uh, Dutch uh, travellers in Ayutthaya. This is a mural that depicts the annual celebration of, uh, of um, it's an annual festival celebrated by the Shia branch of Islam, which um, in the UTR period was a very, very important uh, and arguably its most important constituent. So we have uh, other murals that depict the ethnic diversity here that existed. We have a mixture of Chinese, of Muslim and, and Dutch. And again, uh, Ayutthaya's ethnic diversity is depicted in, in this mural. And so, uh, let's go on. Uh, this is going to be the first of a couple of lectures looking at what I've called Siamese cosmopolitanism. And so why don't we uh, briefly um, wrap things up here when we are wanting, there are some research questions that require us to have an interdisciplinary approach, although we may be social scientists, we have to either learn some skills in the archives or we may want to collaborate with someone who is particularly skilled in this area. So let's go on to our next presentation in this series on Siamese cosmopolitanism by looking at some of the later period. So thanks very much for watching and stay tuned. Thanks again.